Hi, I'm John with the Fossil Channel, and today I'm just going to go over the radio that I carry with me uh, when I'm out hiking or doing trail work or working in the parks. Um, it's going to be a general overview of the radio I use and why I use it. I'm a licensed ham radio operator, um, and you need a license to operate this radio. Uh, this radio that I have here is a Yaesu VX7R. It is a quad band radio, which does 2 meters, 6 meters, 70 centimeters, and 1.25 meters as well. Uh, the unit itself is powered by a lithium ion battery pack, or it can be powered by a AA case, which is used by two AA batteries. I have two nickel metal hydride batteries in here. This is the FBA-23. The radio itself, for my specification, has to be waterproof, and this unit is. It's IPX7 rated, so what that means is uh, you can submerge it up to about six meters of water, or rather six feet of water, for about 30 minutes or so. Um, it's got grommets here and rubber grommets here just to block the water from coming in. This is the DC charging port. This is the microphone port up here. Uh, the unit comes with a uh, dual band and tri-band extension. This is a aftermarket uh, antenna. It's a mono band antenna to, for two meter operation. Uh, this is a B and C also. I have an adapter on this radio. It's a uh, SMA connector to B and C. So this is the SMA connector. It's about six bucks. You can get it at the local ham fest or online. And it's supposed to work with most Yaesus. These radios are made with SMA connectors. Most ham radios today are made with SMA connectors uh, because they're cheaper to make, supposedly, and they're not as good as the BNC connectors, and those rugged and long-lasting. So hence why I have a BNC converter on here. Uh, it's just much easier to operate exchanging antennas in a quick pinch. So. That is my current configuration with this radio. I have a bunch of external antennas which I attach to this as well. Um, the radio itself uh, has a wideband reception. Um, you, you can get AM, FM. Uh, I believe it goes from, I don't remember the lowest part it goes to, but it goes up to 999 megahertz. So I can get um, AM stations, news radio 880. Um, I've gone down to 660. Uh, megahertz with this on the AM band. Uh, it receives uh, a multitude of different types of bands, AM and FM. Um, you can get aircraft, military, auxiliary channels, police, fire, um, uh, commercial. Uh, you get a whole wide variety of different um, frequencies in this unit. Uh, I think it has 450 programmable um, memories which you can, you know, have a two meter one one slot and then maybe next memory could be like a 70 centimeter frequency, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the unit does five watts on two meter and 70 centimeter. Uh, I think it does two watts on six meter and if I'm not mistaken, one watt, one and a half watts on, or one watt rather on 1.25 meter, even though they don't list that on the box. The unit came out about uh, 2002, 2003, so that's the kind of era of technology we're dealing with here with this radio. It's a full analog radio. Uh, some ham radios nowadays have uh, their own digital encoding and decoding inside of it. For example, I have another radio called the Yaesu FT1D. It uses its own proprietary uh, digital encoding and decoding system called Fusion. Uh, what that basically means is there's no static uh, in, in the transmission and the signal can theoretically get out further in some instances. Uh, this is not always the case though. Uh, this radio is fully analog, no digital capabilities. Um, the reason why I use it is that it has a both monitor A and B transceivers in the radio. I mainly use this sometimes to hear both frequencies if I'm listening for something going on. I can talk on one and monitor the other at the same time. It's not a full duplex system, meaning you can't talk and receive at the same time. Uh, it's pretty hard to do that. Some ham radios, they have two antenna ports that allow you to do that for satellite work, perhaps, or in other applications. 
uh, but for my uses, uh, I generally keep it on the main A band, which is the, uh, up here, and this button pushes for the uh, B band. Um, it's important to note the transceiver on the A band has a wider reception and transmission uh, tolerances than the B band on this radio, so the transceivers are slightly different. Um, the radio uh, has a backlit keypad, a DTM, full DTMF, uh, DTMF uh, combination here. Uh, it does receive weather, it's got shortcuts and whatnot. Uh, it's a great little radio. Uh, I don't use software programming to uh, program my radios anymore. I used to. Uh, I just have gotten used to front-end programming everything from uh, the field because when I'm out in the field doing my job or working or hiking, uh, I can't pull out a laptop and just start programming the radios that I have. Uh, it involves a cable that plugs into the mic uh, and plugs into either a USB, USB port or serial port. Uh, and then you have to have the right drivers, etc., etc. It becomes a hassle. So it's just best practice to know how to program your radio uh, from the front end. Um, so the radio itself, uh, it's very durable. Uh, there's some parts of it that will break off. For example, uh, its clip uh, is not the best bell clip. Uh, I like it personally, but it's not the best bell clip because uh, it's made of full plastic and it's not durable enough. I've broken two or three of these in the past five or six years that I've had uh, my radios. I have three of these radios, so I, I use each one for a different kit. And then I have an old VX170, which uses the same mounting system, clip system, and I've broken two on that. Um, some ham radio guys, they just take away this and get rid of it completely so they don't have to uh, deal with that. Um, I like to keep mine with the full clip and the lanyard. Uh, I, I have to say the lanyard is one of the more useful options for me because I tend to drop the radio or if I have hands full, I have to let it hold off my hand for a second. It's pretty useful to have that in the hand. Um, another con, I guess, of the radio would be the uh, knobs up here. They don't come loose easily, but they can be broken off and they can come off. I, I've lost it working on the trail, the top part, my top button, and I had a, a top little part of the uh, uh, knob here and uh, I had to replace that. It's about 343 at, or 349 or some low price at uh, the Yesu uh, Repair Restoring Center in, in California. I have sent these back. Uh, another con would be the uh, CF or the, rather the ceramic filter uh, inside the radio. It tends to go in these units. Uh, it's a common known issue. Uh, I think the replacement's like 49 cents, but the parts and labor is like 35. So it comes out with the shipping and all that to about 50 bucks to replace the filter. Or if you're really tech savvy, you'd break it apart and do it yourself and do some rewiring on the DC uh, uh, capacitor. Uh, there's some... Uh, I believe there's some instructions online where you know, the ham guy posted up him taking apart this radio and going through the process. I don't have the link anymore, otherwise I'd give it to you guys. Overall, uh, despite some of the uh, shortcomings of the unit, I do enjoy it. Uh, it does get hot after a while, transmitting on 5 watts in like 80 degree weather with like 70% humidity. Uh, in the winter, it doesn't get very hot, obviously. Uh, I've used it out in negative or close to negative like zero degree weather basically and I've done overnight camping sessions in the winter with this radio and it has held up. Um, the lithium ion is definitely a preferred choice in the winter cold as opposed to the nickel metal hydride that I run in the uh, AA battery pack. Um, what I like about this radio is that it's pretty flexible in terms of its powering operations. Um, I use uh, rechargeable uh, renewable energy sources on the trail sometimes. Uh, this is a power film AA uh, solar charger. Uh, it has an external USB out, uh, but basically I take the two double A's from my battery pack, I plug them in here, and plug that shot, and then I roll out my power film. Now, I like power film products a lot. Uh, I use them with my ham radio gear. Uh, I have used Goal Zero and whatnot, but as you can see on the side here, you can see the light blinking where my finger is. That's This is actually charging in my room with the lights on it. Uh, that's pretty good for a solar panel. Uh, it does take a couple hours to charge the batteries depending on the sunlight and the angle which you face it and the temperature, etc, etc. Um, but these are some options that I use on the trail with the VX7R. Uh, that's why I use it as a my unit out in the field. 
Um, there are accessories that you can use with it, uh, as you've seen the AA accessory. It's also a speaker accessory. It's a waterproof one, submersible. I have the older model. It plugs in here to the top, and it's quite bulky, so I don't use that as much. I just clip on the radio onto my backpack strap in a uh, tactical fashion, and I access it pretty well. Uh, sometimes you have to speak across the speaker because it is covered with a waterproof membrane. Um, some ham operators, they'll go ahead and puncture that membrane so they get better audio fidelity or at least clear, clarity when they're transmitting. But it kind of defeats the purpose of having this radio as a waterproof unit. Uh, you're better off buying another radio, frankly. Um, so uh, these units do last. I have tested them out in the rain and the water and in the mud and they do perform very well. But uh, just be aware that if you do get water on the unit, the speaker is gonna have water on it, and it's not gonna sound as loud as it normally would being dry, so you'll have to crank up the volume. So that's one, uh, another con of the radio. Uh, I know I'm listing a lot of cons, but uh, I just wanna give you a real kind of overview of what radio offers and what it doesn't in case you're thinking about buying one. Um, these are some reasons uh, that I've noticed using the radio in my experience, and um, I do get a, a great enjoyment out of these radios. I, I usually listen to my weather frequency bands on here. Um, it's got a uh, alphanumeric display, which you can label your frequencies. You can display your uh, amount of... Uh, voltage remaining and options. You can change that too. You can make these uh, numbers and values bigger or smaller. Um, you can even get an old, uh, well not old, but you can get a, a sensor adapter that goes in here. It's like an, uh, I forget what the number part number, but it's like SU something, something. Uh, it gives you barometric pressure reading and all that fun stuff. It's more like a gimmick, honestly. Uh, just use the radio for what it is and it, it works. This one has the unit uh, the ex extended unit in it, the pressure sensor. I got it off eBay a few years ago. They go on eBay for about anywhere from 140 to about 275. If you can get it for about $200 on eBay, that's that's a pretty good deal for these radios. And if it's in decent condition, it's a really good deal. And it does come with like accessories and other things like a drop-in charger, uh, maybe a uh, car adapter or a battery eliminator that plugs into the car. That's all good stuff. Some of them come with like aftermarket antennas. Uh, if you can get any and all of that stuff, uh, I remember my first unit I got of this. I have t three other black units of like this. And one of them came with like a, a Vox um, headset, which plugs into here. And that, that was pretty nifty. So if you can get this radio on eBay with a bunch of accessories for around 200 bucks, I'd say that's a pretty good deal. Uh, just be aware you might have to spend like 50 or so dollars to send it back into Yesu to perhaps replace the ceramic filter. Uh, how do you know when you need to replace the ceramic filter? I've noticed in my experiences, this is subjective, it might be different for you, um, your reception might be reduced, meaning your sensitivity on the unit. It may not be able to receive very well, if at all, and uh, you might be able to still transmit, but you probably want to send in to get it looked at and parts replaced. But overall, it's been a great radio. Uh, it's lasted throughout the years. I've had this model for about seven years now, and I've used it at a variety of ham radio events, uh, someone on the air, uh, you name it, et cetera, et cetera. I even uh, went online and bought a DC uh, up converter. I think I have it over here. Let me uh, bring it out. Um, basically, what this converter does is uh, it'll plug into the DC port of the radio. And it, it sometimes doesn't work because of the amperage, uh, but you plug this end to the USB power bank and it's supposed to convert the voltage from 5 to 12, and this part would plug into the radio. And you, can, you can't really run it uh, because this generates too much RF, so uh, RF interference, so you can't really receive or do much with the radio, unfortunately. And it's within at least a good 20 feet radius uh, emission from this. So this is not an isolated unit. It has bad RFI isolation. Uh, I only use it to charge the radio when it's off. So uh, it does come in handy on the on the trail. Like I said, if I have uh, USB powering options like my solar panel, I can just charge this thing up. Uh, you do need a power bank that's capable of doing at least two amps out. Um, 
consistently in order for this to work. So there are some pros and cons to that. But again, the unit itself is very uh, flexible in terms of its powering options. Um, I use this to power the lithium ion battery and it does it within a reasonable amount of time, maybe about an hour or two. Uh, and it will drain your bar battery bank pretty fast. But these units are very well made. Um, in my opinion, they've, they've been out since like 2003. Um, some people may not like the speaker. It sounds a little too tinny. I understand that, but at the same time, you're getting a unit that's pretty rugged and it does match my specifications, so it might match yours as well. Anyway, that's a general overview of the radio that I use, the Yaesu VX7R, and I also use the Yaesu FT1D, and I'll do a video on that later on. Thanks for watching.